Hey, I'm Carissa and welcome to my channel. I am a stay-at-home mom of four. I have a background in culinary and I honestly just enjoy cooking. For this video, I wanted to do something really fun. And so what I did this week is I documented each of our dinners. So you are getting ready to see a full week of vegan plant-based dinners. Okay, so it is Monday. It is actually like three o'clock. All my kids are down for a nap, which means that this is a great time for me to go ahead and start prepping for dinner. Today I'm going to be showing you guys, for dinner we are having a soba noodle salad and we are going to also have some kind of like, just like vegetable broth soup and I will do a side of just steamed rice to go with that. I personally feel like a soba noodle salad is a very like well-rounded meal because you have a really good carb, super clean carb, right? Then you go ahead, you wanna focus on making sure you get some kind of protein in there. So today I added edamame beans, which are just soybeans, the actual pod inside the soybean. Um, so that's really good protein as well. And then I also added in some frozen peas, another great source of protein. So I added those two sources of protein. So now we have our protein, we have our good carb, and then just load the heck and bob up with all kinds of veggies. The more colors that you're adding to your meals, the more nutrients that you're getting. Like it's almost, it's literally as simple as that. So eat colorful foods. So I will show you how I make this dressing. This is actually just a peanut dressing. Remember, good fats are gonna help you uh, properly absorb the nutrients that are in all of these vegetables and herbs that we're adding, okay? And I will show you really quickly how I make my peanut butter because it takes two seconds. It has no extra added oils to it and I can control the amount of sugar and salt that's in it as well. <laughs> literally just throw your peanuts into the blender and then I'm going to add in um, some Zolka sugar which is just an unprocessed unbleached sugar and then I will add in about a teaspoon of salt you pretty much put this in the blender and you just keep blending until it's nice and creamy and smooth and this is going to be the base for our peanut dressing this dressing is really simple to make and it's a really great go-to dressing I'm gonna add in my peanut butter and then I am simply gonna add in some soy sauce. This is going to add in our sweetness. If you are looking for something gluten-free here, um, you could use coconut aminos, which are gonna be a little bit sweeter. I still do like those, but they are a little bit sweeter. And then I'm going to add in some garlic powder. You can use fresh garlic here and just grate it in with like a cheese grater, or you can just use um, the, the granulated garlic. I'm using this because I'm just trying to prep it really quickly. And then I'm going to add in toasted sesame oil. And to finish it off, I normally like to add fresh ginger, but I don't have any fresh ginger, so what I'm gonna use today is I'm going to just use this sushi ginger that you get from Walmart. This is, I don't recommend this brand. Look for ginger. Pickle ginger, that's actually, the juice is clear and the ginger's white because that's what color it's supposed to be. For now, I'm just gonna use some of the juice in here and this is gonna add like a nice acidity and a little bit of sweetness. Sometimes if I want it to be a little bit sweeter, I'll actually add some maple syrup. So this is something you need to taste and see like what your preference is. So this dressing definitely is more palatable to the kids, <clears throat> excuse me, when I do add the maple syrup. So more than likely I'll end up adding some today. Oh, yummy. Okay. By the way, dip with this one, dip with this one. You got five taste testers just right here. Five. That's good. I'm going to leave it just like that. So this will go right on top of our soba noodle salad. And I will show you how we're going to do a quick, like a really quick soup. And I'm just going to make some, start some rice as well. So just some steamed rice to go with that. What is in my bok choy soup? Bring a pot of water to a boil. I added better, better than bouillon. I added in some soy sauce and I added in the garlic chili oil. Recipe for that is linked below as well as right up here. You see that little thing that just came across? That's the spicy garlic chili oil. And I brought it all up to a boil. I added in my, I washed and sliced up some bok choy, added that in there. I added in a pound of mushrooms. I added in um, two pounds or a pound and a half of tofu. 
and then I added in some fresh garlic. So it's an interesting method to, oh, and I added in a little bit of um, miso paste as well. That was our Monday night dinner. To put it all together, I had one bowl where I added the soba noodles and the rice on the side, and then I had the bowl of the soup on the side. Um, and what I'll do is I'll end up just like adding some of the rice to the soup as I'm eating it. And then I also served it up with a side of some vegan kimchi that I've been making. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing that, maybe leave a comment below and let me know. This was tonight's dinner. Let's see what we are having Tuesday. It is Tuesday and it is that infamous like hour of me trying to get everything done in the day because the kids are sleeping. We are gonna be having a really quick salad that I'm gonna just throw together and make a kind of like a garlic Dijon vinaigrette. And then I'm also going to make a quick vegetable soup. I have like nothing in my refrigerator. So this is a very basic vegetable soup. So let me show you how I do this. Okay, this is one of my favorite ways to make like a quick dressing just to toss your salad in. And it seems so fancy, but it's really so simple. So the first thing I'm going to add is some minced garlic. And then I will go in with some olive oil, a little bit of Dijon mustard, and some kind of um, acidic component. So you can either use like lemon juice or any type of vinegar here. I would recommend using like a lighter color vinegar so i did use white vinegar white wine vinegar would be really well or taste really good here as well so then you're just going to add all those together another thing that i like to do for this is just to make sure i'm using like an oversized bowl and that way i can toss the salad in there as well and i don't have the measurements i'm kind of just i know for me like if i'm having a salad i don't want to have more than a tablespoon of olive oil which is still a little heavy for me so I'm kind of basing my whole um, dressing amount by the oil that I'm using. Um, so that's kind of just how I gauge it, but you can kind of do whatever, however you like your dressing. So anyway, I'm adding all that together and then I'm going to just toss my salad in there and I'm also going to add in some sun-dried tomatoes. These are so delicious. I like these so much better than regular tomatoes. And then I'm also going to add in some onion and this balance of the sun-dried tomato with the onion is so good because the sun-dried tomato is like a little bit more tangy and has a little bit more sweetness that's brought out and then that onion just has that like kick and that bite a little bit of heat but still kind of sweet with the crunchy lettuce and the creamy dressing it's really yummy it almost kind of reminds me of like a um caesar salad or something Okay, it's gonna be kinda loud because the kids actually woke up. Um, so this is just real life, but I'm gonna go through with you how I made this soup really quick. So I don't have, like I said earlier, I don't really have any groceries. Um, so this is kinda like the everything but the kitchen sink of soups, okay? So I'm just kinda throwing stuff in here. There's a lot of canned vegetables and a lot of frozen vegetables. Um, and that's just because at the end of the week, that's what I have left. Although we're going on almost the end of two weeks because I have not made it to the grocery store. So, um, what I did first of all is I just sauteed up some onions and a little bit of olive oil. And then once those got a little caramelized, then I added in some fresh garlic and I added in a whole bulb of garlic. I love garlic. So I added in lots of garlic. And then after that, and I let that kind of just get real fragrant. Then I added in potatoes and some cabbage, okay? And nothing fancy there. I just used some russet potatoes. I typically would prefer a Yukon because they're like a little bit creamier. And I also leave the skin on because a lot of the nutrients to the potato are actually in the skin as well as the fiber. So this is gonna help um, increase your total nutrients there. Okay, and then from there, I'm gonna add in some frozen vegetables. I'm gonna add in frozen peas, frozen mixed vegetables, which I'm glad I had because I have no carrots. So I added all of that, and then I'm going to add in some canned green beans, and I like to add the juice with that as well. And I typically would add in canned peas as well and keep the juice for that little bit of sweetness, but I had no um, canned peas. So we're just going in with the canned green beans, and then a can of stewed tomatoes and some more of that Montreal seasoning that I forgot to tell you about in the beginning, but I added in some Montreal to the onions and the garlic in the beginning stage. I like using this Montreal steak, um, and this one's actually Montreal like smoky, um, so it adds like this real like meatiness to the soup. 
Um, and then I also am adding in some of this Better Than Bouillon, um, Veggie Better Than Bouillon. So I love this stuff. If you guys have not tried this, or if you're new to the channel, you'll notice that I do add this to a lot of things. So I add that and then I will top it all off with some water. Just bring it to a simmer um, and let that go until the potatoes are nice and tender. Then I'll shut it off. This soup is actually better once it's been refrigerated and then served the next day. But this is what we are having for dinner tonight. And we're going to serve that along with that salad that I made earlier. And that will be our Tuesday night dinner. So. I will see you tomorrow at dinner. Actually, I'll see you tomorrow around 3 o'clock because that's when I make dinner. So anyway, I forgot to mention I also added in a can of kidney beans. And this is going to add in a decent amount of protein and a ton of fiber. Um, and a lot more stuff. But anyway, beans. You can do any beans. Garbanzo beans, white beans, lima beans, any kind of bean. Ooh, lima beans would have been good. Or but Oh, I wish I would have added lima beans. Welcome back to the kitchen. It is Wednesday evening. It's been a hectic, busy day. So today I decided, and I was actually inspired by watching the Edgy Veg. She had a really great video. It was actually a what I eat in a day, and she made this really simple pasta dish. That is going to be our dinner tonight, and I will probably have this whole thing put together in less than 30 minutes. It's a very easy meal. So let's get started on that. The first thing I did to get started is I went ahead and put some water on the stove and you want to salt your water really heavy to cook your pasta in. And then I went ahead and chopped up some, what the heck is this called? An eggplant. I peeled it first. It doesn't really matter. You'll notice that I didn't get all of the skin off. Sometimes when I'm roasting it or doing like a baked parm with it, um, I actually will just do like one strip, skip a line, one strip, skip a line. It's kind of tough, but it does have a lot of nutrients. So sometimes I will try to keep some of it, but for this application, I'm taking as much of the skin off as I can. And I have went ahead and put some olive oil. I preheated my um, saute pan. I put a little bit of olive oil and I'm just going to pan saute these until they're nice and caramelized and delicious. In the meantime, while my eggplant was getting nice and brown and caramelized, I went ahead and minced up some garlic and let my water continue to come to a boil because you know that takes forever sometimes. Today for the eggplant, I had gone back and forth on how to season it up. I think what I'm actually gonna do is just do salt and kind of let the garlic and everything saute up with it at the end. Um, instead of like overpowering the spices because I really want this just to be like this heavy garlicky. While my pasta is going and my eggplant is going, I'm going to actually add in my garlic to the eggplant and let that start to cook up. You don't want this, like pretty much as soon as this garlic starts to barely turn brown, that's as far as you want to go. You don't want to go too far on this. You're not really looking for it to get like crunchy um, or like super caramelized. You're just wanting it to like put its flavors in this oil, okay? So my pasta is going, I have, I use like an angel hair pasta, so it's really thin, so it's not gonna take long. And in the last minute of my pasta cooking, I'm gonna add in the peas right into the cooking water, and that's how my peas are gonna defry. Also, you wanna make sure you're always reserving a little bit of your cooking broth. It has all the starch from the pasta in it, which is gonna really help to make the sauce a little bit velvety. Plus, it's gonna help kind of deglaze the pan and get anything that's stuck to the bottom and make it just real velvety, creamy, like rich sauce. So you wanna always save a little bit of your cooking broth. The last step to finish this off is to simply toss the pasta in with your garlic and your eggplant and some of the cooking liquid and I did add a little bit more olive oil and that is it, then you are done. All right, so this is the end result. It looks really yummy. I was really glad that I added in the peas for some extra protein and I love, oh my God, my camera's falling, come. Anyway, I really loved the eggplant with it. It looks yummy. I did add in some extra nutritional yeast and the chili flakes on me and Frankie's portions. But yeah, this is like a really quick go-to meal. We love it. The kids like to call it peas and pasta. I'm gonna give it a quick little taste. I'm trying to get like the perfect bite, but I have a lot of noodles. Okay. Mmm. It's 
so I wouldn't say this is like the healthiest meal, but it's a quick go-to. It has a decent amount of protein. It could be a better carb like whole wheat pasta, but I'm not trying to have whole wheat pasta right now. But anyway. Mm. All right, we are back in the kitchen. It is Thursday and it is 2.40. Again, I'm cooking again while the twins are taking their nap. And tonight we are having, your hair's in my video. Tonight we are having japchae. It's a Korean dish and it's a noodle dish made from sweet potato noodles. I've made japchae a few different ways. I've tried the traditional way where you individually saute all of your vegetables. And then I have actually found that this seems to be the easiest method that I'm gonna do today where you actually do all of this in one pot. So I will link the recipe that I used below. I'm actually using a recipe from somebody else. I think her channel is Mengshi, Menengshi, something like that. But I love this recipe. She has the traditional japchae as well, so if you choose to do that. Um, but the first thing that I like to do is go ahead and get all of my mise en place or your prep done. So all I have done for the noodles is I let them soak for 40 minutes in cold water. And then I went ahead and drained them off and then I just cut them into like six inch pieces because they come in like really long pieces and they're harder to cut I feel like once they're cooked. So I went ahead and let those soak, cut them, and then I went ahead and prepped all my veggies. I'll just show you everything that's going in it. So this is everything that's going in it. We already talked about the noodles and these are the veggies that are going in it. So I have chose to use carrots. I have onion, some bell pepper, some mushrooms. I have some green onion and some zucchini. And this tofu I actually got from Aldi's yesterday. It's a pre-cooked and marinated um, teriyaki tofu. So I thought this would be perfect in it. And I don't have to pre-cook it on the stove because it's already has a nice sear on the outside, so that'll hold up well. Traditionally, japchae, japchae actually has a lot of spinach in it. I wish I had some, but I don't. So I went ahead and prepped my noodles, I prepped my veggies, and I prepped my sauce. Like I said, I will have the full recipe and to include the instructions. I'm gonna link her recipe below. So if you wanna use that as a guide, I'm just kinda showing you what we're eating. So the idea of all of this going in one pot just makes it so much more family friendly and easy. The longest part is actually sitting there and doing all of your prep work. So essentially all you're gonna do is you're gonna toss all of your veggies with a little bit of oil and a little bit of water in your pot that you're cooking them in, right? Once everything's coated in a little bit of water, a little bit of oil, then if you had your spinach at that point, you would layer that next and then you would put your noodles on top and then pour your sauce over it, tint it, and let it cook for 10 minutes on medium high, okay? Yeah, guys, bye, I'm Camo, we love it. Mix it up. Yeah, I'm gonna have oil all over my hands. <laughs> all right, these are my wonderful helpers. We have all of our veggies in here, and our tofu, and we added a quarter cup of oil and a quarter cup of water. And once that's well combined, we will move on to the next step. Okay, yep. Are your hands clean too, Emmy? Emmy! <laughs> okay, I could not help myself. I have to go in for a little taste. And also I had to get, oh, let me grab some chopsticks. I feel like right now I'm about to do like an insane like mukbang. Feels so legit right now. Okay, I gotta spread this out. Oh, it smells so good. If you've never had the um, the sweet potato noodles, it is so fun to eat these noodles in general because they're so like um, they're like really chewy. Oh, it's hot. Mmm. Mmm. It's so chewy. Mm -hmm. This is the best japchae I've ever had. The only thing I would change about it is I think I would have cut some of the vegetables like bigger. Cause like my onions and my um, bell pepper are really soft. So it's just like a textural thing. The mushrooms are perfect. Tofu's perfect. 
Even the green onions I should have just cut in like big pieces. Like big chunks of vegetables in this I think would be better than how I cut it. Anyway, Japchi for dinner Thursday night, Friday night. I still actually have no idea what we're eating tomorrow. So I'll meet you guys back in the kitchen tomorrow for dinner tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you have to you have to tell us what you think. Are they yummy? Open. <laughs> you got it? Why'd you let it oh. you like it? No? <laughs> Oh hey, so this is supposed to be Friday's meal, but I totally forgot to film um, until we were about to eat. But this has actually worked out perfect because this is a typical Friday for us. A lot of times we do not have the big girls on Friday nights. The two oldest will go and stay with my mother-in-law, Gammy. And so Friday nights are like the foods that me and Frankie just want to eat. So sometimes we order pizza or a lot of times we'll go out and get Mexican. And tonight we wanted ramen. And actually last Friday we had ramen again. So I don't know, I was on a ramen kick. But anyway, so we literally just had some ramen. I threw in some tofu for some protein, some mushrooms. I think we ended up putting some sriracha as well. And then on the side we had some edamame. And I just made like a quick little dressing for that, which was just soy sauce, a little bit of seasoned rice vinegar and sesame oil. That's so yummy, we really like that. Also, I made a quick like kale Caesar salad. This has been one of my favorites lately and I have been, we've literally been eating it like three or four times a week. So we had that as well. I threw in some peas, some frozen peas in there for more protein. So this was actually macro wise, this was a pretty good meal, but a lot of fat. Well, not a lot, but the ramen has quite a bit of fat and a lot of sodium. Um, so I did wake up feeling kind of puffy, but it is what it is. So that was our five days of meals. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that. Um, it was pretty time consuming doing all of that, but I don't know, I hope you guys find it worth it. Be sure to subscribe, hit the like, give me a thumbs up, whatever you wanna do, you know, this is me asking you to do something. Um, and leave me a comment below if you have any questions about the recipes you saw today, or if you have any requests on some future videos that you guys would like to see, so. Until next time. Hold on guys. Well, thank you guys. Thumbs up for this video. Subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.